Are you a merchant who's been struggling with a slow performing Magento website? Or are you a developer who's been given the job to optimize a slow site? Hi, my name is Harshit. I'm from Codular. We are an award-winning Adobe agency that specializes in high performing Magento websites and PWAs. In this very simple and high level video, which any layman can understand, we'll take a holistic and very high level look at the entire Magento landscape. We'll understand the different components involved uh, that contribute to performance. I promise you by end of this video, you will have full clarity on what really is happening on your store and you will know what actions to take and whom to contact and solve your performance issues. So let's get started. So uh, the topic that I'm going to talk about today is, as you can see on the screen, uh, is this demystifying Magento performance. So basically, uh, I'll be taking a very, very high level approach on how to uh, how to go about tuning Magento performance. Now, this is not a very technical deep level uh, presentation. We are looking at a 10,000 feet level. So it's very easy for uh, the business folks, the merchant, uh, marketing teams, any te techno functional guys, project managers, BAs, uh, to easily understand what really happens, right? And we'll understand why it is important to even uh, understand uh, the behind the scenes. And, and obviously for developers also uh, who want to understand the big picture and basically we'll go back to the basics. All right. Okay. So this, this is going to be my agenda. First, we'll take a look at what exactly is the slow Magento problem. And we look at the frustrations of Magento and what really is a solution. All right. And towards the end, I have a little surprise like I always have uh, on my talks. Okay, so let's get started. So uh, <clears throat> if you're somebody in the Magento ecosystem, there is high chance that you have heard a lot of backlash uh, uh, you know, of people claiming that Magento is slow, Magento is heavy. There are a lot of haters, right? And obviously negativity spreads faster, right? So I really want to ask this question, is Magento really slow? Because if you, if you take a look at some of the world's top e-commerce sites, which are doing tremendous amount of transactions, uh, which are on Magento, right? And they don't have any problem. They're able to, I know a site which does about 500 checkouts uh, per minute, right? So there is no problem. Right? If 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 uh, somebody like that can run Magento without any problem, is really Magento the problem, right? So let's look at what are the factors uh, which contribute to this negativity, all right? So these are some of the factors. First of all, Magento 2 was premature. We all know that, right? Magento was, one was very healthy and running fine. And suddenly there's this Magento 2 and this comes Magento 2 Cloud and everything was too fast, right? Uh, I think we, I think uh, Magento did not give it ample time to mature and it just hit the market. Now, the initial merchants who went live faced a lot of problems. There was actually a lot of problems in Magento 2 Cloud plus even Magento 2, it was very heavy, right? And, and people used to compare it to Magento 1, which was very light. That is number one problem. Second problem is that Magento is free, right? And this is, this is actually the biggest benefit of uh, Magento, but uh, it also adds to this problem. The reason being, if you if you look at any uh, software that is free or that is very affordable, right? The major the majority uh, of the user spectrum are small businesses, and small businesses usually don't have the right resources to invest in uh, right technology team and have the right tools and all the expertise, right? So they go about, they go about doing a shabby job of the platform, and the platform struggles. Now this. Uh, if you compare to a platform like Shopify, is not a problem because Shopify is also cheap and majority of the users are on their first plan, I think, which is some $29 per month. But since uh, it does not have any flexibility and don't get access to the code, there is nothing much a merchant can do about it. Right? So you cannot uh, do much wrong in Shopify, which is why it does not struggle. So if you look at the spectrum of both Magento users and Shopify users, there are large, uh, small business users or micro users which keep complaining. Right. And they believe that Magento is a problem. Right. And the third thing is obviously the customization, which we all know, uh, it can be customized to the core. You can turn it to whatever you want. Now, that also means that there's a high possibility a developer goes and changes things in the wrong places in the wrong way. And fourth thing is basically, even if you're not a small business, you're a big business, but if you have the mentality of looking at e-commerce development as a cost and try to uh, develop in the least 
cost possible so then you will go out and you know get your work done by an inexperienced team who does not know how to build how to build a proper magento then your platform struggles right now the blame is not on magento it's basically your decision of going uh, having gone to a low experienced team and the fifth thing is that uh, this is the most funniest thing that i have seen uh, most business i have seen that they they take months and months or not 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 uh, if not years to decide that they have to go online to decide which platform they'll choose to decide the agency and all that so they'll take a lot of time right now once they decide and give the project to the agency they are like okay give me the website in two months or three months and they put a lot of pressure on the developers and developers uh give into it because of multiple reasons maybe they don't have enough projects or whatever and then the developers cut corners and again the platform struggles now end of the day everybody blames magento uh, for this problem right now in between all this uh the person who gets stuck is the business is a merchant right he does not know what really is going on all he says is the google page speed score and which is showing a lot of low scores and his customers are complaining his conversion is dropping and and he does not understand actually what where is a problem right and uh, more because most business owners or even marketing teams or let's say head of e-commerce of any company are not really technical right so they don't know where the problem is right so they go to the hosting team uh, if they are on community Uh, or their, I mean, hosting enterprise edition on their own, and the hosting guy says, uh, "We are all fine. It's the developers who did a very, you know, crappy code, and your website is struggling because of that." Now you go to a developer. Developers, developers, you know, we have written the most beautiful code on earth, uh, but your hosting guys are not taking care of it properly, right? Or some of the developers might say, "The previous developers who worked on the website uh, wrote a shitty code, and we are struggling because of that." Now you have to build everything. So you, the merchant is like totally now frustrated. without having any data what is happening now who should he go to and all that right so this is the problem that we are going to address today so the solution is very very simple uh, the first thing is that uh, anybody who is uh, owns the success of e-commerce store or let's say even if you are a developer right it's very imp- important to understand the entire uh, flow of what all things are happening the all what is happening in behind the scenes right so when you understand that you will understand what all components are involved basically in performance now performance is not a single piece of thing right there are a lot of components involved so you need to understand what all components are there and then once you understand then you can actually monitor each of this uh, components for bottleneck right and you need different sort of experts for each of this bottlenecks one person cannot do do the job now one once you understand the bottleneck then you can go about tuning it right and the third thing is it's not a one time job you have to make it like a process because uh, it's not like you p- do a performance optimization today and just forget it because your platform keeps evolving a lot of features being added there's a lot of data that's coming in so uh, it has to be a process okay so let's understand a basic flow of a website a magento website you can say now this is very important i have, I have oversimplified it there are a lot of things other things that is happening but uh, let's understand this for now okay so let's say a user is basically sitting on his laptop and entering www.abcstore.com so what happens is uh, this abcstore.com is converted to an ipa by dns server and all that which is, which is not mandatory to understand right now now basically your request goes and hits a server right now the server knows that okay what is this guy requesting for like, for example if if the person has uh, typed abcstore.com/let's say uh, some category now the server basically um, takes this request understand what what uh, really it has to do to give the response the user is accepting right now there are a lot of things that are moving parts that is there here in inside this right so first there is the infrastructure right which is your hosting setup right and then there is a web server there is a database and there is a magento application code right so now what the server does is server basically takes the magento code there are actually thousands and thousands of files and lines now it processes all this uh, and basically comes with the output uh first maybe the data output and that is basically rendered into a front end code right now this is the output that you're going to get from this entire uh piece right now this has to be transferred back to the user right so now that that is the response that comes basically the http response right so that has a front end code in it all right now that front end code comes to the browser now browser also has to do actually a lot of processing to show this front end code to the user in a in a proper way right so now a full circle uh, of uh, if you hit any page this full circle is complete now for the user he does not care about what is really happening uh, in the background right so basically the, for the user the moment he hits uh, the url now and what comes in front of his browser how fast it comes and how smooth it loads that is called perceived performance so you can have the fastest uh, servers you can have the best code everything but as long as the user does not feel the performance right it's a feeling 
uh, then your perceived performance, you don't have perceived performance, right? So even, even if the numbers show really great, uh, your user is not going to be happy, all right? So, uh, so in this, let's break down. So basically the main components are, uh, one, obviously the user's browser can be a component, right? Now, if, if the user is browse, uh, hitting the website from a, uh, let's say a low end phone, right? Which does not have proper resources, then whatever website is going to load, that's going to load very slow for him. So let's not care about that right now because uh, that's not something that is in our control. So the, the components that we have in our control is one, the infrastructure, which I'll talk about in the upcoming slides, and then the Magento code, right? So by infrastructure, what I mean is uh, your app server, database, and CQRM, all that we'll discuss now. Then there is this Magento big, Magento code that is an application that is there. Now that can be a big bottleneck. And the front-end code, right? So front-end code, when it comes back to the browser, uh, yeah, when it, when it comes back to the browser, now browser actually has to process all this, right? If that code is also not optimized, uh, then a bottleneck can happen there, okay? Now I want to make it more simple. I don't think I can make it more simple by taking a restaurant analogy, okay? Uh, so consider you're going to a restaurant, right? Basically the user is now, uh, uh, setting this laptop with this browser open. Consider the browser is a, it's not a perfect analogy. There can be a lot of loopholes, but consider that um, browser is a waiter, okay? Now the user is, you see the customer is placing his request uh, to the waiter saying that, okay, I want these, these items. Now what the browser does is, he, the browser basically, uh, basically the waiter, okay? The request basically goes to the kitchen, right? Now in kitchen, there are a lot of things. There is a big infrastructure. There, there, there is tow, there is uh, vessels, there is fridge, there is oven and everything. This is this is your infra, okay? Now, the code is basically uh, whatever you have requested, right? Now, there, there, need, there needs to be a recipe for, uh, I mean, whatever items you have, right? So that recipe is a code, right? And now that recipe is prepared by chefs. Chefs are nothing but our developers, right? So a good chef can write a very good recipe, which is fast and, you know, which produces really tasty food. A bad chef can write code, which uh, takes a lot of time to get the same uh, product and it, it may not be even tasty, right? Now, after the kitchen uh, produces, cooks the food, the customer cannot eat it, right? Immediately, so he, he cannot experience it. Now, now the waiter has to bring the food back to his table, right? Even after the waiter reaches at the table, he still cannot eat. It has just reached his browser. Now, it also depends on the waiter, how fast you know he puts all the plates on the table and uh, how fast he serves uh, the dish to the user. Only after he serves, the user can start eating, right? Now, that, that's why I said even the browser and even the, uh, sorry, the front end uh, plays a very vital role in perceived performance, okay? So that's a very, very simple explanation that I can give. Uh, so let's go forward, okay? Now, uh, the important things to note here is that no single tool can pinpoint bottleneck, right? Because this is spread across different stuff. So there is user's browser, there is infrastructure, there is Magento code, there is DB, there is that, this, and there is front-end code, this browser. There are, there are different stuff, right? And these are happening in different areas. So one tool cannot actually pinpoint uh, the bottleneck, right? You need actually different sets of tools and you need different experts also to even identify where the bottleneck is, right? So you just, you are, if you're just sitting on Google PageSpeed and, you know, go, just going to developer, you may not even understand where the problem is, right? So that's what I said in the, uh, it's sort of one, one, one man job. Right? So now let's understand what all the components involved. So the main components are that we are going to talk about is infra, uh, not much of infra also, uh, but mostly backend, frontend code or experience. And we'll look at, look at caching, okay? How caching plays a role in all of these things. So infrastructure is nowadays very abstracted, right? Let's say you are on Adobe Commerce Cloud, you don't even have to care about what the infra is. Right. And even there are a lot of other platforms which will allow you to do that. But let's say you are uh, hosting it on your uh, with your own team or you have you're going with somebody like, let's say, our own Pradeep Lero Connect and all. Then um, uh, basically, the in whatever uh, the, the resources of the infrastructure really matters, right? The CPU, the CPU power matters, the RAM matters, the disk, uh, all that matters, right? Now, your app server and database is your Nginx tuned properly? Is your database tuned properly? Is the database maintenance done properly? Uh, all that matters, right? Because just imagine if the kitchen has only, let's say one one oven and one stove, uh, how can it basically uh, cater so many parallel requests that's coming from so many of the customers in the restaurant? You, you cannot. So you need to have enough resources 
to ensure that you, you are able to you know, meet the demand. So resource also very important, right? But usually this is not a bottleneck because it has been solved many times for different sort of web applications, right? And there are a lot of experts in this area. And the third thing is obviously physical location of the server, right? So let's say you're sitting in India, but your servers are in U UK, every request has to travel to uh, US and come back, right? So basically there is network latency. Now it will be in milliseconds, but every millisecond matters. That's how you, have, you can have an overall impact on performance. All right. So the biggest bottleneck happens here in Magento application code. Now, uh, so let's look at, I, I'll simplify, let's look at what are the, uh, uh, like from my experience, these are the biggest bottlenecks that I've seen. There could be more, right? One is Magento is a big, huge platform, right? And I don't know any merchant who uses all of the features uh, of Magento. You cannot use it. So there are a lot of unused Magento modules out there. So you need to remove them. I mean, you need to disable them. That should not be part of your, um, application right so there are ways to do that so that is one then using an extension for every damn thing right so merchants are like you know i need this feature so they take a big extension which will, that feature might be a small part of the extension they might not even use the other parts now so when you bloat your magento with a lot of third party extensions uh, basically you're adding to the adding fuel to the problem and third thing is most of some of these extensions are very poorly written also so it can have performance uh, impact we have all seen this right and the fourth thing, uh, basically, I really have to call this out is basically, um, so let's say a user is uh, basically uh, uh, you know, request something that is outside your Magento, an external API in your synchronous request. Okay, for example, let's say uh, a user is placing an order. Okay, now you have some system, let's say an ERP or something. As soon as the order is placed, you have to hit that ERP with the order. Now, the wrong, very wrong way to do it is in the order flow itself, let's say user is clicking on place order, you're uh, processing the order and then you're synchronously sending a request to that ERP and uh, you know waiting for the response and then you finish the order, right? So what happens if, what if the ERP is slow, right? So then it sort of waits and waits and waits. So which adds to your, to your timing. So the, the ideal way to you do is basically using queuing, which is there in Magento 2, or you can use cron job. So your order process can be done uh, you know, just like that without worrying about the RP and this can be you know, added to the queue. So some, maybe a, a couple of seconds later that will happen separately so that the user's experience is not trouble. Okay. Now the most uh, easy me metric to uh, track whether your uh, infra plus your imagined application code is proper is look at the time to first byte. Time to first byte means, uh, I'll just go back. So after the request goes to the this place, now, how much time it takes to give a response to generate this front end code and give a response so that is time to first byte now if in if you have bottleneck in any of these places your time to first byte will be very high okay so nowadays i think uh, about 500 to 800 seconds i think is considered okay now this is without having a full page cache or varnish right so you need to check this uh, then the next thing is front end experience now uh, most Magento developers that i have seen really don't care about front end experience okay uh, because they are actually, when you say Magento developer, you just think about uh, back end. Now, th this front end code is where actually, in my opinion, uh, perceived, I mean, most of the perceived performance or user experience really matters on this. Because even, even if the, um, you know, the response is immediately generated and, you know, it's there on the user's browser, just imagine you're going to website and it starts loading. Okay. So first, uh, you know, some picture came, then it, it uh, shifted below and something else came and there's a lot of things jumping and some images are loading and you're not able to even click you feel that okay some, there are so many things loading and you're just waiting for it right now this is not because of your back end code or for info this is because your front end code is really poorly written now these are some of the reasons so one is your html css is not clean so mostly you would have used uh, some theme available in some marketplace you just went for the looks of it you don't know what kind of code is written in the back and to make it worse you actually added a, added a lot of customization on top of it now the browser has to load your default theme and then again put your customization on top of it, which makes it very, very heavy. Then not using proper bundling because uh, Magento comes with a lot of uh, JavaScript, right? Uh, and you don't need all of this in every places. So you need to have proper bundling to ensure that uh, only the required stuff is loaded everywhere. And it, it, it does a lot of uh, minification merging and all those things, right? And third thing is CDN. Now CDN is also, also affects the front end experience, right? So uh, I don't want to go in deep. So basically uh, how a website works is the first request has to go to the server and the response comes. So in the response, basically there are a lot of static assets that you need. So you need images, you need videos and all that. Now, 
all those requests actually don't have to go to the server because there is no logic to process right it can be stored somewhere else you have to just call that image and get it you call uh, ask for the image you get it so that can be distributed in a cdn and the advantage is that a cdn can be close to your user so you, you'll get immediately right and the fourth thing which uh, really uh, improve experience is image optimization so there are lots of tools available right now which can identify the user what sort of device is on uh, what sort of connection he has and for the viewport that he's seeing what is actually the image size required right so since there are tools like this it can it can optimize the image and give the lightest image for you so let's say somebody is visiting a pdp page on an imac and one guy is visiting on a low end phone okay so on an imac the thumbnail might be really large but on the phone it might be small right but if you don't have uh, intelligent image optimization you would send the same large image to both of these guys and this guy struggles so you, you need to send only a tiny image right so you have to automate it and obviously the next thing is uh, lazy loading right so uh, which most of the guys are doing right now so you have to basically show the about the about the page fold initially and the remaining stuff when the user scrolls you have to lazy load right now the fifth thing is that front end engineering it's an ocean so i mean front end performance engineering itself is an ocean right so every element and every section on your page can be tuned separately for example let's say you have a carousel something that we did on one of our project was that uh, they had a carousel on every page that was a requirement and that used to come on top right now that that was very uh, javascript heavy so what we saw was that the page actually loads but this uh, thing that comes on top was the last thing to load okay so uh, and that basically affected the perceived performance because everything else was loaded whatever the user wanted was loaded but since this loaded last user felt that okay uh, the page has not loaded so what so basically we thought that okay what we did was we instead of loading the carousel we loaded the first slide as an image okay and and the page was loaded now user does not feel that okay page is not loaded and in the background we loaded the carousel once that was ready we replaced this image with the carousel without the user noticing so these this this are some logics that you can apply to your front end right so similarly uh, you can do various lots of things in the front end to keep optimizing it and obviously the metrics that you can look at uh, for front end is your core web vitals uh, which is basically given by google so one is cumulative cumulative uh, layout shift which shows if your layout is shifting too much and next is largest content footprint so on any page the primary content has to load very quickly right then the third is first input delay how long the user has to wait uh, before he can interact how long he has to wait uh, to start eating his dish okay so that is first input delay and these are very easy to uh, track uh, to to an extent with lighthouse and uh, google page speed okay i just want to look at my time okay uh, five minutes so the next important thing is caching okay now caching let's look at this image so caching can be applied anywhere and is being applied so even the user's browser has caching dns has caching your server database everything has has caching and most of the things these things are taken care automatically now two things are not taken care automatically one is your uh basically the the cache caching of this response this front end code right which this entire infra and your machine uh, code is generating that has to be cached and that is, because that is a biggest bottleneck and one more thing that can be cached is your front end so you can use service workers and cache pages but um, which may not be recommended for e-commerce because it's very dynamic right but still you can do it and for example progressive web apps uh, can do that easily so basically you need something called varnish now what does varnish do so varnish comes and sits here uh, outside your magento application outside your server outside your db everything now it is a separate um, server on its own it's a reverse proxy now all of the users request go here to varnish now varnish checks do i have the response of this request already with me if no it sends a request to here gets a response it keeps it with him and uh, sends a, sends one to the user next time it gets a similar response it does not put the uh, route the request back to this place imagine it just you know uh, serves the response from there itself now that is a big big uh, performance boost that you get right because you are not touching the database you are not even executing a single line of code right okay so which can actually give at least 10x even more than 10x so the the results of varnish will be very high depending on how bad your uh, magento code is okay so now in varnish there are a couple of things that you have to take care so one is proper setup and visible configuration and one is distributed varnish so if you have users from different parts of the world you can basically distribute your varnish so that wherever the user is he gets the varnish response from a region nearby now that can be killer okay which is what fastly does that's why you see adobe commerce cloud uh, websites are super fast 
and controlling the purge i'll not talk about it because of time uh, it's basically you don't have to refresh the magento cache uh, always you don't have to follow its logic so depending on what your business uh, what time it changes you can control the purge right and fourth thing is cache warming now this is a beautiful concept so basically um, what warming means you can manually hit the pages on your website uh, by running a script or by running a bot and ensure that all of your pages are warmed so that an actual user comes and hits that page uh, you don't have to execute i mean execute all the logic uh, the bot machine can simply give the response so none of the users will feel that uh, uh, the website is slow this is a perfect bandaid for your magento performance problem now the one one mistake that people do with warming is uh, they write scripts which continuously warms all of the pages in magento and that pulls the site down which is a paradox right now this is why i am coming to the surprise that we have so we have built something uh, called a smart cache warmer it's in an alpha uh, stage now but we have had successes with it so what it does is it's a cache warmer tool which sits outside your magento application it's a saas tool it's intelligent so it knows which pages not warmed right now not not in cache it knows that and then it goes and caches it now when it goes and caches it does not go and bombard all the this it has a priority depending on what the user is most likely to uh, visit based on your traffic data okay and it also looks at your health of your server uh, basically if if the server is getting too much load from the warmer or otherwise it does not uh, you know hamper so this sort of intelligent uh, warming we have and you can do a multi country uh, warming also so let's say you have different uh, responses or different this one for different ips so because our uh, saas software is outside magento we can uh, do that so this is something that we are building uh, uh, we have all, all, already had success so if you want to test it out with us uh, in beta please reach out to me okay and i would like to end with some common mistakes so performance as i said earlier is not a one time job you have to continuously do it and second thing what merchants uh, do is they obsess on page speed so they don't care about the perceived performance or what users really experience they are just looking at the score and say you know the score is not the score is not the score is not they don't even know how, what the users are feeling which is why you should you should you should obviously look at page speed because they'll reveal something right but actually what the users are feeling is not cannot be done with page speed because that's a lab test right you have to uh, do a field test now so for that there are different tools so you can use um, chrome's uh, crux tool or you can use new relics browser so there are a lot of tools so it actually looks at what the user is experiencing right so that is one and third thing is that pw is a different ball game uh, pw works in a very different way not the way not this flow that i said there are a lot of differences now measuring pw's performance on page speed is also not a good idea because in pwa you hit a url uh, the rendering happens for once and next time you click the page does not load you get immediate results right but when you test in page speed you're going to paste the urls of all of this separately and it it basically calculates time for the full rendering which is wrong which is not what a users are feeling and the fourth thing which is a funny thing uh, developers i have seen that they test only the home page and see our uh, scores are very good but home page is not the place where your users are spending time right it's mostly plp and pdp and some uh, most people actually talk about mobile first and all but they just worry about desktop because that's what they are using it in their office um, and last thing is testing performance of only warmed pages so if you're using warnish and the pages are warm obviously it'll be very fast so if, if you're just testing that uh, that will not give a full picture because a lot of your users will be seeing uh and one page pages if you're not using a smart uh, cache warmer yeah i think i hit the goal i have two more minutes so yeah, so that's all uh, guys thank you for listening with so much patience